Our uh, is ranked 16th in the world with all our international arts and research universities. Uh, we're actually second in the world outside Europe and North America, the first in the Southern Hemisphere. But maybe if we learn portfolios, you can reflect on what ANU would have to do to become number, number one in the world in terms of environmental sustainability. I'm sure Alice has got some ideas on what you might do with learn portfolios. Yeah, and if there's any space, you might want to sort of learn Okay, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that you're all sort of beginning to think about essays as well. So I, I just, just to start, I, I just thought it was very nice to just think of the way that the whole sort of talk went together. And you have to do this in your essays as well, even though you're looking at sort of environmental and ecological science and sort of social sciences. Every time you are trying to put an argument together, you're actually constructing a story. And it was very interesting the way in which the, uh, the speakers, the way they moved through a series of issues which are related to the core of this, um, um, of this course. Rob started with the very sort of, um, uh, with the individual and the way in which just even before we get up and have breakfast in the morning, our practices have been, in, have been influenced not by global technological and productive systems and the way in which our actions have got global consequences, um, especially ecological consequences. So, so we started off at that position of the individual and our impact upon the environment. Before we started moving through to actually looking at John talking about the way that an institution can actually change things. Uh, the ANU and AN, through ANU Green has made an enormous impact over the past uh, over, 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 the, over the past while, and then we had two wonderful um, uh, discussions about the role of the individual and participation in changing things from um, from Ed and from Jennifer um, through looking at sort of the way that people in Yale have been participating in recycling, for example, and the way that the ANU sort of on learning communities, um, environmental learning communities, have made, a dis uh, have made a difference. So just think about the way in which we actually structured this today, because any time you're trying to make an argument, you've always got to remember you're telling a story, and it makes an incredible amount of difference how you actually present it. And I think the way that we went from the individual and sort of our role in these big production systems right through to the way that the individual and institutions can make a difference was actually very important. But I suppose, I felt a bit sorry here for um, Rob. He actually sort of started off, of course, in this story looking like the ecological grim reaper. And sort of telling us about, you know, how grim things are. And about, um, um, about um, uh, sort of the irrationality of the economic system in which he, uh, in which we live. Um, even the irrationality, it's like great pieces of irrationality even before we sort of um, get to the university, which really brought up this issue of the way our society is structured affects the way we live and the way we behave. Just think of them um, in the discussion about milk being transported, gum, passing each other across the nullabar and the energy that that gets used. And I'll come back to some of, um, some of those other um, sort of examples there. But I think this idea on it's important for us to focus on the way our society is structured if we want to understand our behavior and the way we can change it comes back to what Will was saying about the way our affluent society has influenced the way we, um, uh, we, we are we, um, uh, we're affecting the environment. And it comes back to what Andrew Campbell was saying as well about the way we use water and the way we're locked into an existing sort of, um, um, sort of social system that forces that. So I think what Rob was um, showing us was a magnitude of the problem from the basis of sort of a where we are locked in as individuals to a social system. And I think that was really important. And of course at the end what he was uh, doing was he was saying that we must change the ecological signature of our society by becoming more ecologically literate. And that's what we're trying to sort of do here in this, in this course as well. But that whole idea, well, I'll, I'll keep on coming back to this in the course, because I find it absolutely fascinating. And I think this is something that Peter Kanowski was talking about as well. We might know more about ecological damage. We might know more about what we're doing to the environment. And what Stephens was telling us all about that. But to what extent um, does that actually make an impact on the way we actually do things? Yeah.
you know, what, uh, what is the relationship between knowledge and action? And this is something I'll keep on coming back to. But I think some of our examples um, that we had from Jennifer and from Ed and from John gave us an example. And I think one of the key issues is participation. The importance of us as individuals participating in various groups to change things. I know there was a lovely example, uh, there was a lovely question there about sort of um, about ANU buildings. I'm actually a member of the Kyola campus. Um, management committee, which we're um, going to be going to down at the um, during our break for our field trip, and we're actually currently building a multi-purpose building down there, and we've got um, ANU Green involved in it. I just thought, oh, build another building down there, no problem. It's amazing how much you learn just by participating in one of these projects about sort of using sort of local materials about sort of um, about wastewater about, and of course there's interesting water issues down there because you've got to gather all your own water there isn't mains water down there so there'll be fascinating issues that you'll be dealing with there so ANU Green is a, in a great way for us to sort of um, and be participating in various organisations on campus is a great way to sort of be start becoming literate in the way that um, Rob was talking about. And we heard sort of um, um, Ed talking about sort of liter um, um, ecological literacy at Yale. And then of course we heard Jennifer on the sort of the environmental sort of learning communities. And I think that's important, so the importance of participation. But that also sort of allows you to sort of uh, think of some of the ironies. There were some fantastic ironies about milk and power and everything like that. Um, literacy, e ecological literacy doesn't mean that we suddenly change everything. I'll just give you an example. This isn't a criticism of ANU Green, but every time you go to the toilet here on ANU now, ANU Green has done a fantastic job. Every time you go to the toilet, close the door behind you, and there's ANU Green sort of, um, a, sort of, sort of um, adverts on the toilet door there. You sit there and you take it all in. I think I've learned an awful lot about sort of um, environmental literacy just by sitting on the toilet doing the crap at the ANU. <laughs> But then I stand up, pull my hands up, and then what do I do? I do what, exactly what uh, Andrew Campbell told us last week about, about an un-Australian activity. We use drinking quality water to flush away our waste, you know, so, but that's not a criticism of ANU, but it's making us more conscious of other things that we could actually do. Before ANU Green came along, I wasn't even aware of these types of things. Another issue which is going to become important, I think, that, sort of, uh, that Rob brought up was the issue of globalisation. <coughs> and, and, and everything that we're talking about here, Rob went very global. Even though we're actually located in place, what happened is that everything we do has got global consequences, whether it's drinking our coffee or wearing our t-shirts. And I'll be talking more about that, about the irrationality of our economic system whereby the wool that's produced here in Australia goes over to places like Italy to make fabric, comes back here, goes to places like China to actually be sewn up, and comes back here and um, to be sold. And that makes it cheaper, so they say, than actually manufacturing them all in one place. Of course it's not cheaper, because what's been forgotten are the issues that Rob has been talking about, about energy use, that aren't taken into account. So this issue of globalisation and the production chains in which, and transportation chains that we live within is a very important issue which we'll be looking at after the break. In fact, we'll be talking about it even down at Kyola. And just a couple of things about, about, about in more generally about studying environmental issues. Did you notice almost everyone was talking about the importance of place? Think about this when it comes to your essay. When you're doing social science and environmental science, place is so absolutely crucial to what we do. Um, um, you can only really start measuring what you're doing once we actually talk about place. We're all embedded in place, and this was a thing I think that sort of Ed sort of, um, sort of focused on, that he said that he lives on campus, he studies here. This is his environment, and actually acting within particular places is so important. So that's why your research has always got to be anchored in place. And so think about that with your essay. It's really important to actually focus on environmental impacts in particular circumstances in certain places. And again, when we go down to Kyola, we will be looking at a lot of these issues we'll be discussing in a particular spot. And it really makes you more attuned to the particularities of the problems that you've got dealing with communities as well as local sort of um, flora and fauna. The other important thing I think which um, um, uh, that came out from Ed's um, work was the importance of comparative research 
when you're doing environmental studies.